Hello, everyone. Harry here to talk about the mysterious and deeply disturbing scandal brewing about the possibly made up uh, nature of the whole case in 303 Creative, the case that the Supreme Court decided at the end of its term and that permitted uh, a private citizen to discriminate against gays and lesbians in violation of a state anti-discrimination law for the first time uh, in history, I believe, overturning or, or um, making an inroad on many years, some 45 of precedent. Okay, it's a super interesting story, but it, it does get a little legal, but I'll keep that part kind of light, but hang with me. All right, you may know the case itself. A website designer or a so-called self-styled website designer named Lori Smith uh, sued in 2016. Uh, she said, I'm not a website designer yet, but I want to be a website designer. And Colorado has a law that says if you are are basically hold yourself out as a business, you may not discriminate on the basis of the fairly well-known protected categories, race, religion, ethnicity, and not so unusually, although not universally for these laws, Colorado adds sexual orientation. And that's what stuck in the craw of Lori Smith. She said because of her religious feelings, she didn't want to have to do business with same-sex uh, couples. Uh, she felt that that would be forcing her to endorse a message that uh, same-sex marriage is okay, and that message goes against her religion. Now, really importantly for the case, it's not a real claim of free exercise. What she's saying is, because I have these religious beliefs, I don't want to have to stand up and say, hooray for same-sex marriage. And that, the argument goes, is what I would be doing if a same-sex couple walked through the door and said, would you please design my website uh, that would force me to basically um, endorse the message of the state law and show that I champion same-sex marriage. I don't. The state is compelling me to do a message that I don't believe in. That's a violation of my First Amendment rights. Okay, now um, the case goes uh, on the, on this basis. The district court says, "Look, there's no actual standing here," and I will double back to that for, in a little chapter. But there, she hasn't really shown that there's a real risk that this will happen yet. But the court of appeals let it proceed. Uh, saying no, there was enough, and and the and the Supreme Court did also. So here's a small chapter on case or controversy. First, it it is super 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 important. If you know nothing, just know that Article Three of the Constitution says that the courts can can only do real case or controversies. They can't just advise on what the law is, and that's absolute bedrock. Only if, you know, parties are really joined in a dispute, then you have things sharpened and you have a real um, case that the court can act on rather than just sitting as a sort of wise uh, body of, of jurists. So um, in order to bring a case, there must be a real injury. There must be a real um, risk. You really have to have a fight here. Now, um, this case at its best, is ginned up by a group called Alliance Defending Freedom. It's a religious group. And when uh, Lori Smith brings her case in 2016, she's never been a, uh, she's never done any um, website designing. Everybody acknowledges that. So you might ask, how do you have an actual controversy? Well, there is a, a doctrine that says, look, basically, 
if the power of the state is hovering over you, if you know that as soon, you know, that very soon they will, they will come down on you, you can actually bring a lawsuit, a so-called pre-enforcement challenge saying, look, I'm all ready to do this. I've got, I've got things good to go. And, uh, the state, uh, is what will come down on me. So there's enough here for you court to really decide if this is legal or not a so-called pre-enforcement challenge. Very, very importantly, a lot of people who are defending the case are just whiffing on this. It is not a substitute for actual standing and a case or controversy. So you can't just do it. Oh, one day I might like to um, have a website design place and, and maybe then the, the, uh, the state would forbid me. That's not good enough. You really have to be a person who's basically all but pulled the trigger on what you want to do. Smith, we know, had never been a website designer. Uh, she had never taken for of any sort. It's not just that she hadn't uh, not uh, had received a request from a, um, a same sex couple. But the day after she filed the suit, she uh, included in the facts of her complaint a specific request from the same sex couple, Stuart and Mike, I believe it was. Hey, we want to get married and we're pretty interested in using you, maybe doing the website services itself. And she puts that, that's part of her complaint. And then uh, the, the, her lawyers actually say, so now nobody can say that this is just, um, you know, uh, that there's not something real here. She's about to do this. She's gotten this request. And actually, we know how Colorado normally um, responds uh, because we know from other cases, they say, no, 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 you must serve uh, or hold yourself as open to gays and lesbians. So we're really just at the precipice. I don't have to jump over the cliff in order for the court to decide it. And and at least the court of appeal, the, the, the district court still said, look, that's not enough. You haven't really done it. You said you might, you've gotten this request, okay, from the same sex couple. Um, but still, you know, and until they you've actually turned them down and Colorado's come after you, it's not enough. Court of appeal said it was enough. And the Supreme Court just took it at, at face value and decided its whole case, which I'm going to get to soon. Here's the new, the scandal and mystery. Nobody had done this before, but a reporter took the information that was in the complaint and traced it back to the to the person who had done the inquiry, readily identifiable with email, etc. It's a married man with a child uh, who was completely flabbergasted. Said, I, "I I never got this request. It's the first time." I'm hearing about it. I'm, I am, um, I, you know, I'm not in a same sex marriage. I've for 15 years been in a heterosexual marriage and I have a child. I don't know what this person could be talking about. And now he has been active in saying, you know, he, he, uh, is in favor of same sex marriage. And I guess he's been in social media or whatever. So it looks as though uh, maybe almost as a sort of nasty joke, they just grab him and use his name as the person who had set that up. This is fraud. You know, they, they've told the court, here's why I have standing. And um, this is a real case because I've gotten this. And they, and they you know, really lean on it. And remember, they, they do this the day after they file the complaint. And their lawyers say, you know, we don't have to wait now. Here, here's, here's the way they put in any claim that Lori will never receive a request, because this is what the district court said, to create a custom website celebrating a same-sex ceremony is no longer, no longer legitimate, said the lawyers, because Lori has received such a request, even though she's not currently in the wedding industry. So, she, I mean, she hadn't even started this thing yet. I re she received an email inquiry on September 21st, 2016. So this is a woman who had never been a website designer and, the, and, and made up or, you know, her lawyers, what they tried to say after this came out is, is pretty flimsy. But, hey, even if she received a flawed, fraudulent request, nobody should have to wait 
uh, to uh, you know actually go forward in order for the state then to come down on its head. So they're actually trying to say, even if the whole thing was um, fraudulent, uh, it sh- still should be fine. Now, the attorney general of Colorado said this was a made up case. And it looks as if he is going to um, try. There, there are there is a mechanism in the Supreme Court, Rule sixty, to set aside something because there was never jurisdiction to begin with. There's also a doctrine in the Supreme Court only that when the Supreme Court uh, is in good faith, kind of um, misadvised about jurisdiction, and they do the whole case. They're the Supreme Court, and rather than have to go through the whole thing again, uh, since they assumed for good reason there was standing, the the, the case still stands. I strongly suspect that's what's going to happen here. The Attorney General of Colorado will say this wasn't a real case. It was never real. And at least the six uh, in the majority uh, by Justice Gorsuch will say, yeah, well, maybe not. But at this point, uh, the, we've done all the work and uh, the the opinion will stand. And let me just say the opinion that's standing is a travesty. Um, because the the idea of it is this is this woman um, would be let's say we're all it were all true it looks like it was all totally contrived by conservative activists in order to just set up a, a ruling that was an advisory opinion it was it wasn't anything real at all and you know look in a real case she'd have been had to show well the you know Colorado came in and that said absolutely not. Maybe that wouldn't have happened. Maybe there'd have been a chance for a commendation or whatever. But the case that that they decided said um, you can uh, refuse business because you disagree with same sex marriage. Now, every case dating back from you know the civil rights era, uh, in which uh, just imagine sort of you know luncheonettes in the South in 1963. And the the feds come in and say, look, you may you can have your racist views, but if you're running a public business, you can't just turn down uh, African American black people, uh, as they would have said then. And what if the owner said, look, um, my views are I, I don't I don't agree with integration. In fact, I have religious reasons that my pastor reinforces in church every every Sunday. If you and by the way, th- this town is crazy focused on this. If I'm forced to uh, serve um, African Americans, it's going to absolutely send a message, and it absolutely would have uh, that um, I'm in favor of integration and I'm not. In other words, this principle that they use to single out discrimination, flat out discrimination against gays and lesbians by a business has no limiting principle and could apply to anyone. It, it, the, the very argument was made in the civil rights cases. I don't, you're forcing me to take a stance I don't want to. And the, and the law was very clear. We're not forcing you to take a stance. It's not a First Amendment issue. If you open your businesses to the public, you can't discriminate. That's not that's not a First Amendment issue. That's a flat out discrimination issue. And of course, you know, same thing here. A website designer, really, you know, you, a website designer puts together an itinerary, get, you know, gives the sends things out. That's not that's not or if it is anything is, you know, a message in support of same sex marriage is just as Kagan asked at um, oral argument. What about the people who give the chairs? You know, they sell them. Can they can can they refuse because that would send a message. So this principle that the court allowed in this phony baloney case is really um pernicious and a, a license to discriminate of the sort the court has never granted before and has in fact steadfastly refused and the case should ne- should never have been brought because there wasn't standing and it should still be or could be uh, vacated but that won't happen so we have a terrible precedent on the books from a phony uh, case for, that was never a real case or controversy or so it appears and it's it's uh, 
two black guys, and not to mention a, a real tragedy. People just ginned up this case out of nowhere to get this question uh, served up to the Supreme Court, which, as people were hoping, gave the a result that is just a, a giant step back from a commitment that the federal government and many states ha, ha, have made. You know, Colorado said, we don't want to discriminate on the basis of sexual orientation uh, if, for our people who hold out businesses to everyone. And the Supreme Court said, guess what? You have to permit it. It would violate the First Amendment. Big, big inroad, big um, uh, blow to gays and lesbians in particular who have been singled out here. Probably the case involving, say, racial discrimination might, you know, might not happen because because people aren't that grotesque now, but it's still for religious reasons considered okay to discriminate against gays and lesbians. And now they are, you know, singled out for that uh, in Colorado and maybe other cases as well. It is a screwed up case from top to bottom, beginning to end. And it does look like it's the end. Talk to you later. Thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed this video and other Talking Feds content, please take a second to like and subscribe. Talk to you later.